How's it going? I hope you're doing as good as I'm doing today. You know, I have slight beef with myself, but I'm very happy with the effort that we put in today. You know, the benches went extremely well, even though I am slightly miffed that I basically gypped myself out of a really good top set, uh, which we'll get into. And um, snatches, I actually overperformed. I thought I did way better than I thought I, than I originally intended to. You know, uh, this is like kind of what's nice about feeling it out. I had that energy to be like, all right, well, I definitely didn't use everything I had right there. Not in a failure sense, but like more of a intensity idea. Um, and I decided to throw on that little bit of extra weight right at the end, have an actual like intense top set and I fucking killed it, which I'm very happy with. So physically, um, I'm going to have to give it, I can, I'll give it a solid eight, like right on the, right on the cusp, just sitting right there on that line. I don't think I went too crazy or anything. Um, I did, again, this is the whole point of this program. I, I'm going to have days where I'm tired and not as energetic as I may want to be. And again, if you know Olympic lifting, any day where you program bench like I do with Olympic lifts, it's some hard ass conditioning for the shoulders and the mobility. It is really hard to get that spaghetti noodle feeling back into your joints after going hard on some heavy ass benches. Um, otherwise, tomorrow's rest day. And for the first three days of this program, I talked a little bit about how it could have been a little bit of, of a placebo at the beginning. And I wasn't sure if the program was really gonna work as well as I, as well as I wanted it to. And I'm pretty happy to say that it's fucking working. I, I really like what I'm doing. Uh, I may like change the reps up a little bit after this uh, cycle goes all the way through. You never know, just feel it out. But I, I honestly really like what I've managed to do with what I've got. Um, so mentally, we'll throw it up at a solid 8.4. Not an 8.5. I don't think I was like right there yet. Um, cause I, I do think that I just wasn't, it's just one of those days where I don't think I had that full drive energy on the bench that I would have liked to have. Um, but again, that's the whole point of this program. I'm going to be able to hit bench day again for the same reps in th like three, four days whenever I have my next one. And I, it's just all about getting back on it and pushing it even harder, you know? So first topic of the day. Uh, I wanted to bring up what I like to call top set paranoia, <laughs> which I am sure a lot of people can relate to just based off hearing that fucking sentence. Um, to me, at least in my experience, what ends up happening is you get to that top heavyweight, especially when you're not working with percentages like I am now, and you just kind of feel it out and listen to your body, and you put that weight on, and you're like, last set wasn't as difficult as I wanted it to be. But I don't know if it's at that range where I feel super comfortable pushing it. But I, I've mentioned this before. You kind of just have to not, f obviously, you never want to, like, put yourself at physical risk, you know, to injury or anything. But you got to give it a chance, you know. It's okay if you don't hit the full set of five like I wanted today. Because um, I got up to uh, 295, and I was pretty fucking confident. And, again, my bench hasn't been as strong as it was before because of how much less I'm eating comparatively to my fats and my carbs being on this a little bit of a diet but again like the effort's been there and I, I was pretty confident and I went in and I got nervous <laughs> so I went up to like fucking I, I think I got up to 275 uh and I was like all right well I knew I was gonna kill that and I had been benching with the uh, Olympic bar because if you've ever worked out of the crunch, for some fucking reason, they can't afford powerlifting bars that don't spin. I don't get it, but whatever. Uh, so my options were an Olympic bar or an elephant, like not an elephant bar, but like, you know, the, the, the slightly thicker than you want them to be bars uh, that are also Olympic bars for some fucking reason. They still spun, but they had the good grip and they were wider. So I was like, okay, someone... I literally watched someone bench like 335 next to me and I was like, okay, well, if you're doing that and you're confident, whatever. And so I was like, because I wasn't fully confident in what I was doing, and I got a little bit nervous by that top set. I decided to last second change the bar I was using, even though I had already done my warmups with it. 
and I did like one warm-up set with the new bar I was like okay that felt pretty good and the moment I put on that heavier weight I was like ah oh, fuck I, I messed up and you might be able to see it but I literally just I, I think it's just because I wasn't able to uh, rip the bar as tight as I normally do I just could not get my elbows to go to the sides like it, I immediately started flaring out and putting the stress onto my shoulders which like when it gets really heavy you know like anything your mobility is going to go down and your form's going to start deteriorating even just a little bit and so like I, you know normally if I'm like really really pushing it like in that hard ass drive I'll flare just a little bit but man I, I was like full sideways elbow like I was my elbows looked like literal L's while I was doing it and I felt like I was taking them too um it was just unfortunate and I was like I had like zero drive on that first attempt and I was like man it was that close but I you know who knows and so in my head I was like all right well I, I this is the weight that I wanted to hit and then attempt maybe 305 that was a big maybe I didn't really expect to go to 305 but I definitely expected 295 so I was like okay because I still have a little bit of energy left in me I'm at least going to give myself the experience of trying one more time with the Olympic bar uh, just to fully uh, consolidate in my head that this is the bar that I want to use from now on while I'm out of town. Uh, and again, as you'll see, very unfortunate. I missed it, but it was definitely moving faster <laughs> and it definitely felt easier. And I just kind of sat there and I'm like, if I just fucking committed and didn't get nervous at the last second and let that paranoia take over and I started listening to everybody else's advice rather than committing to what my body was used to and really knew, even if it was a little different than what I'm used to, uh, I definitely would have had it. But again, your boy's humble. This is kind of, I'm gonna transition into what the other thing I wanted to mention. Because of that set, I wanna talk about giving yourself infinite second, second chances. This is not just weightlifting, this is literally everything. Uh, but I guess I'll mention it more in the weightlifting sense just because that's what we're talking about. Um, but I guess what I mean is in anything you do in life, you are going to fail. You know, even if it's someone else's version of success, to your own standards, you will, if you, as long as you are consistent, and especially if you are passionate about something, the more passion you have, the more connected you get and the more growth you get. Uh, but just with that, like with that growth, that passion will eventually bring a plateau that causes you to fail. Uh, that is a very positive thing that people do not realize. The fact that we have the opportunity to fail without consequence as long as you're doing it safely, you know, very big if there. Because um, again, if you're ego lifting and you're not worrying about your body's uh, physical health first, then yeah, you're probably going to get fucked up. But at least with what I'm doing, I was just feeling out what felt good, what felt comfortable, and committing to what I can drive with my whole body without like feeling like it's going to actually physically take me out. Um, so to me, at least, you, I think it's such a better use of your time and your efforts and your passions to view every time you have a shit day or fail a lift, whatever like I did today for a stupid reason, as a positive step. People do not realize that you are only as negative as you make yourself out to be. And so I could sit here and mope all day like, oh, I failed, I should have had it, blah, 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 excuses, excuses. Or I could say, okay, well, at least now I know under said circumstance, I definitely would have had it. Um, and that's a good mentality to have, because even if I wouldn't have had it, because it's all based off my own uh, bias toward my body, I get to try again, which is where the infinite second chances come in in such a positive way. You allow yourself to say, okay, well, I'm going to kill it next time. Even if it's not the same weight, even if it's not the same reps, not the same lift, whatever. It's just that intensity behind it that's important. That purpose, the desire, the passion, everything. You know, whatever you, whatever f emotions you put behind the bar and behind the weights that you're lifting, that's what matters. Not the numerical... 295 or 305 that I wanted. It's just staying consistent and passionate. It's it's not that complicated, you know? It doesn't have to be about how perfect your program needs to be or how perfectly your 
utilizing the energy you have and whatever, counting your macros and your carbs, your proteins, whatever, you can just have fun and just say, I'm going to do better next time and just work with that, you know? And I feel like people don't realize that you can get pretty close to a similar amount of success by just learning to enjoy that those those little failures because people I, people really this is something people really don't realize every time someone comes up to me and they're like oh, I'm unhappy with how I've been growing I've been plateauing I I don't look as good as I want to I'm not lifting the, as consistently as I want to and I'm like all right show me a post or a picture of you from six months ago assuming they record stuff if you've been in the gym for a, a, a minute uh, you probably have got something on there, you know, at least from six months ago. And I'm like, show me a picture of you or a video of you from six months ago, like on the day from the gym. And every time that person will be like, oh, well, I was shit back then. Exactly my fucking point. The whole purpose of the past is to give you actual substantial proof that you have it in you to do better. So it's not that you in the past was shit and you now is good. It's about... The you in the past was the best you had at that moment in time. And now that you've put in the effort, the time, the consistency, and the passion, and the intensity, you are now better because of that. Those experiences along the way. And so just like six months ago, you think you were shit. In six more months, you'll look back at today and think that you were shit today in six months. It's all about that mindset of like knowing that as long as you are like keeping with it, keeping your body safe, remaining passionate... You will get better, no matter fucking what. Even Again, you cannot uh, limit your mindset your, or your open-mindedness to just the numbers or just the lifts you're doing. It's the intensity, how much you enjoy that workout. The numbers and the technique and the form are all great, but you can have a positive workout by... You could fail every single set. You could have horrible form compared to what you're normally doing. But as long as you are trying your absolute fucking hardest to do better and believe that you uh, can do better and can gain enjoyment from that chase of I'm going to do better next time, that's what I care about, you know? I don't care if if you haven't gone up in weight in six months, whether it be the weights you lift or your body weight or go down in body weight, whatever. I don't care if you've been plateauing. I care that you have been showing up, giving the same intensity, and maintaining the same level of enjoyment, if not more. You know? There's always, like, it's always great to have a maintained amount of love for whatever you do in your daily life. But being able to put more into it later on is so, so important. It, it will, it could literally create a career for you in your probably more uh soon than you think future uh you know it it always comes out of nowhere life is never working with you you are working with life and so whatever you're doing stay consistent but don't have expectations of when something something is going to happen or how strong you're going to get per whatever amount of effort you put in just go in enjoy the day today put in what you got today and by the end of it, enjoy it. Uh, you know, give yourself the credit you deserve for that effort you put in and the experiences that you gained that day. And you, I'm, I swear to you, man, people don't realize it, but in like six months, a year, five years, ten years, you're going to look back and be like, wow, I am so, so glad I maintain my passion and my consistency and my intensity because there is no way I would have been able to be where I am right now if not, I had put that effort forward. And again, same thing as I was saying before with like the six month uh, transformations or whatever. When it comes to your career, no matter how unsuccessful you think you are compared to the rest of the world or the, compared to the, all the millionaires that people try to compare themselves to, because again, that's not, it's literally not statistically comparable. You know, they're a different fucking breed in the society. You just got to look at yourself and make progress on your own. And so, Right now, you look back at you from five, ten years ago, depending on your age, and you're like, oh, well, I was shit back then. I didn't know shit back then. But guess what? That's the best you fucking had. And you made do with what you had at that point in time. So even though for me, I'm 21 now. I look back 10 years, I'm 11. 
I'm like, well, I didn't know shit. I was a kid. I didn't even hit puberty yet. I, I wasn't even lifting. I, I was probably like the age where I start, first started learning about what a diet was, you know, or eating greens, whatever. And I wasn't worried about all that shit. But I look back and I'm like, well, I was given it as much as 11-year-old me could give. And so now that 11-year-old me, 12-year-old me, 13-year-old me, up to 20-year-old 20 20 year old me, they all gave forth that effort that they were able to give while maintaining the consistency and the passion needed to keep doing it every day. Now me as a 21-year-old, I can look back and be like, I could not be where I am right now if me, 11, not even just 11, me from the womb to now, if I had not put in what I put in up to this point, I would never be as successful as I am right now. And I don't even make money right now. <laughs> People always think success is just based off the green shit. It's not. It's, it's how, better, how much better your daily life has gotten every single day. You know, because take it with a grain of salt, like I'm always saying, but it, the only thing that is really important is knowing how to enjoy, like people say, treat today like your last. I don't think, I think people misinterpret that because it's never from a place of fear. Like a f people all automatically assume like that they got to be afraid that they're going to die today. So they need to do everything they possibly can today. No, it's just a matter of having the mindset of if I were to die today, I would know that I did everything that I could and I enjoyed it, you know? And that doesn't mean going to the fucking Bahamas or lifting on the Olympic stage. You put forth everything that you up to this point right now had in you. And that's what's important. And so if I die tomorrow, shit, I love what I did. There are always going to be things that I would not regret but look back on it and be like I probably could have worked on that or mended that relationship or done a little bit more to make this situation a little bit better but at that at this point in time in my life I just got to accept that it's not what I got and I got to also have that hope that trust and that passion that intensity that sooner than later I will have the strength to tackle those things that I do, cannot yet do or have not made the opportunity to attempt yet so that's kind of all I got you know I, I I know I got a little personal maybe a little philosophical but I love to talk about this shit and I appreciate anybody who's willing to listen or and all the support that comes with it so rest day tomorrow so unfortunately no you will not see me tomorrow but we will be back with clean and jerk day soon after and I'm going to just be putting in that same level of passion, that same level of intensity, and same amount of love. And that's kind of all I got. So enjoy your lifts in the meantime, and I will be back. See ya.